Okay, so we're going to look at a quick overview of the free agent overview page. And this is where a lot of the information will be compiled for you when you actually start updating the software. This is what your free agent will look like when it's first set up and you're starting out for the first time. And we're going to walk through all the different sections that you need to use in order to update free agent in the most useful way and also the correct way. Let's start off with looking at this page here you will see a cash flow box. This is going to be quite literally the incoming and outgoing amounts through the business for the last 12 months by default. You can also change it to other months, but generally it just literally says how much is coming in and how much is going out. And then it'll give you a total balance at the end. This is kind of like for your own reference of cash flow. And it's not really that important for you in terms of like how much money you can take out of the business. It's going to be a little bit further down. So this next box here is the invoices box. Oops, sorry. Let's highlight invoices. In here, you can create your first invoice. You can also track the invoices that are currently open. So when you actually start making them, they'll show up in here and you can see what's been paid and what hasn't been paid. And you can also click into them based on, because they'll show up here as a bar graph later on, which we'll actually look at in a minute as well. This box here is the banking tab. And basically it shows the current business account balance for your company. And at the moment there's nothing in there. So it is zero, which is absolutely correct. And when you start getting money in there, it'll show you a total balance in the account. And when you set up bank feeds, it should always match your actual business account balance. And further down at the very bottom left corner, we've got the expenses tab. This simply shows any out of pocket expenses that are currently owed to you from the business. So anything you pay for personally with a personal credit card, debit card or cash will be added into here. So you will actually have to create a new expense for these in order to repay yourself. So when you start with Juniper links, you will often pay your first accountancy fee from your personal account if there is no business account to pay from yet, which is absolutely fine. All we do is add this cost into here as an out of pocket expense. And this balance owed to you is what you can take to repay yourself for the amount in here. So this money can be taken at any point in time. It does not matter. It's not a source of income. It's simply a repayment of expenses. This balance will also change when you update the banking and a payment goes out to, towards your expenses. It'll update this total balance owed for you. Just got to make sure you explain it correctly. So it does actually reduce the balance. And lastly, but also most importantly, this is likely the most important thing on the page is profit and loss. And what the profit and loss does is calculate how much corporation tax your company is going to pay based on its income and expenses since the start of the accounting period. So you have the income box here and currently that is zero because there's nothing in the software at the minute. It'll deduct any VAT from this before it goes into the income section. So you can be happy to know that the VAT is accounted for before it's added into here. Expenses, this will be all the business expenses. So any out of pocket expenses you've added, the expenses in the business account. When we run salary, that'll come out of here as well. And then you'll be left with a remaining operating profit. And this profit is charged with corporation tax at 19%. Once that's done, the software will look at any previous periods to check if there's any money to carry forward from a previous year. So if you had spare profit from a previous year that's been carried forward, it'll add that to your carried forward amount, which is here. And then what you're left with is the total carried forward and distributable balance on free agent, which is essentially how many dividends you can take from the company. So anytime you want to take a dividend, you must update the whole software with all of your expenses, bank transactions, invoices, and then come to this area and check what is available for you to take from the company. And if this figure is more than zero pounds, then you can take some dividends. If it is at zero pounds or a negative figure, the company physically doesn't have the money to pay you a dividend and also be able to pay its own taxes. So make sure this figure 
it's always above zero when you're looking to take a dividend. If it's a negative figure from normal trading expenses, so for example, your expenses are more than the income the company is receiving, don't worry about that. It simply means the company is not making a profit and it also means you should not be taking any dividends because the company doesn't have any money for you. And that was just a quick overview of the overview page of Free Agent and how it can be very useful to you to see how much money is available for you to take as dividends and also keep track of any out-of-pocket expenses that you need to take out. Mm -hmm.